Hello, and this is my final vlog for my Theater 201 class, and the film I'm going to be discussing today is Vertigo, which was created in 1958 by Alfred Hitchcock. And this film is about a former police officer named John Scotty Ferguson, who developed two diseases, agoraphobia and vertigo, a fear of heights, and a loss of balance due to an incident where he watched a fellow colleague fall to his death. And after this incident, he is requested by an acquaintance named Gavin Elster to follow his wife Madeline around because he believes she has been possessed by a ghost named Carlotta Valdez. But throughout Scotty's journey following Madeline around, it proves to become more than just that. But the plot of this film is not what I will be discussing. What I will be discussing is the qualities that make this film so outstanding and unlike any other I have ever seen. First, I'm going to discuss how the film makes the audience feel like they're losing their own sense of balance or their own vertigo. Alfred Hitchcock does a neat trick to make the audience feel this way, because just when you think the film is ending, he drags on the movie's plot duration by adding in um, Madeline's uh, follower or Madeline's replacement towards her death, scene by scene. And the way Hitchcock does this is through the use of time, or how time itself is a sort of vertigo. Because the film's duration makes the audience feel like they are losing time rather than losing balance. Which also makes the audience feel disoriented. And then another notable aspect Alfred Hitchcock uses is his miss end scene. Because the use of color green, Alfred Hitchcock uses it for Madeline's car when Scotty is following her around. This color is also apparent when Scotty follows Madeline's look-alike to her hotel room because the hotel is green in the film. And this made me think of the film The Great Gatsby because Gatsby spots a green light across the lake from his mansion, which is a symbol for his faraway love or his dooming love for Daisy, which is similar to Scotty's dooming love for Madeline because she is then murdered. But this film also connects to our, cult to our culture today because it goes deep into the depths of the real human psychological disorders and the effects of them. Because perhaps, perhaps Alfred Hitchcock was highlighting those effects through Scotty's vertigo and agoraphobia and through the use of mm -hmm. the storyline. But through Scotty's perspective and all the tragic incidents he endures, witnessing Madeline's death and being put in a mental institution, the audience begins to understand the repercussions of these diseases and other diseases like them. And the scenes that come into mind when I say this is the beginning scene. When Scotty stands on the stool to show Madeline he can conquer his agoraphobia and the scene where Midge is, visi is visiting Scotty in the asylum. I thought of these scenes because they are both prime examples of the effects of these diseases on loved ones and people that care about the people with these diseases. But this also leads me to discuss Alfred Hitchcock's use of camera angles. Because a scene that comes into mind when I think of his camera angles is where Scotty is reconstructing Judy as Madeline because this ultimately leads to Scotty discovering the truth about her death. However, the camera angles come into play when Scotty finds out about Madeline's death, particularly the, the scene when Judy takes Scotty to the spot where she fell to her death because these camera angles depict not only Scotty's acorophobia, but him conquering it in, an, in order to discover the truth of his lover's death. Lastly, during the scene, the camera focuses Scotty and Judy up the stairs and then closes in on Scotty to emphasize his acorophobia, and then moves from, his, from him face to face to the ground emphasis on how far Scotty is from the ground. These are all aspects that contributed to Vertigo's success. And thank you.